Rogers debate starts now. We are coming to you live from the Braden Auditorium on the campus of Illinois State University here in Normal for the Illinois Governor's Debate. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Roscoe from WCIA3 in Champaign. And I'm Timon Bradley from WGN-TV in Chicago. We want to welcome those of you watching at home as well as our large crowd of voters here in person to the first of two exclusive debates between the candidates for governor of Illinois. And while we are broadcasting live from central Illinois, this debate is airing live in every county across the state, from Chicago to Champaign, Rockford to East St. Louis, and everywhere in between, carried by eight next star media group stations and two partner tv stations we want you to join in on the conversation throughout the hour using the hashtag ilgovdebate you can see it there in the corner of your screen before we begin let's set the ground rules each candidate will have 60 seconds for each question if there are follow-ups candidates will have 30 seconds and there will be up to 30 seconds allowed for any rebuttals at the end of the debate each candidate will have 30 seconds for closing statements candidates you'll know your time is up when you hear this bell also we are very excited to have our live audience with us we have told them they need to hold their applause until the very end of the debate and with that let's get started governor pritzker senator bailey thank you both very much for being here tonight much has been said about the sweeping police and criminal justice reform package known as the safety act the focus has largely been on one provision set to take effect january 1st that will eliminate cash bail in illinois a recent next star, Emerson College, the Hill Poll, found 48% of likely voters think the new policy will increase crime. Governor Pritzker, we are starting with you tonight. You've said you are willing to consider changes to the bill, but you have not elaborated. So what specific changes are you in favor of? You have 60 seconds. Well, let me begin by saying that everyone deserves to feel safe in their homes, in their communities. And um, honestly, crime rose substantially during the pandemic, and I take that very seriously. Now, the criminal justice system that Darren Bailey and Republicans are standing up for is one that allows murderers and rapists and domestic abusers to buy their way out of jail. And that's unsafe for our families, for our neighborhoods, and frankly, uh, victims' rights organizations are supportive of the Safety Act. If you want to reduce crime, you've got to solve crime. You've got to do what I've done, which is to increase the number of state police, build state-of-the-art crime labs, make sure that we're funding violence prevention and youth summer jobs programs, and, uh, of course, funding mental health and substance abuse treatment. But Darren Bailey is a hypocrite on this subject. I mean, he has voted against all of these things, and he even voted to defund police. Oh, unreal. Uh, uh, Governor, this is your chance now. What specific changes would you make to the Safety Act? Well, I think that there are clarifications. People, you know, as you know, the Republicans have put out a lot of disinformation, a whole list of things that they say are uh, non-detainable offenses. There's no such thing under the Safety Act as non-detainable offenses. Uh, and again, it, the goal of it is to keep murderers, rapists, domestic abusers, violent criminals in jail, and a poor young mother who uh, shoplifts uh, diapers Governor Pritzker, and formula Governor Pritzker, one more would be chance. kept you, in for months Pritzker, if she doesn't have the $500 the, to pay. Are you so. willing to answer the question? One specific change you would make? Again, I think there are clarifications that can be made in the law to make sure that everyone understands right. what this law We're is We're going to move about. on. Senator Bailey, now on to you. You have repeatedly advocated for the repeal of the Safety Act, but the bill also encompasses new programs for police, like mental health screenings for officers and use of body cameras statewide. If you repeal the whole law, those programs are gone. So what do you do? You have 60 seconds. Well, Governor Pritzker is obviously lying about everything that he just said. And I I think it's very interesting that 100 of the 102 states attorneys across the state, a third of them being Democrats, are standing up against this as well. I think it's obvious that's why I have the full support of the police on this deal, because they know exactly what, they, what this does. The Safety Act must be repealed because it lets violent criminals and murderers out of jail before trial. Now, Governor Pritzker could have proposed bail reform for nonviolent criminals. I would have supported that, but he didn't. Instead, he signed a bill that's attaching revolving doors to every jail in the state of Illinois. And friends, we're going More to have lies. the exact same problem across the state, 
that Chicagoists experience and after January 1st. So again, Senator Bailey, would you repeal the act, the Safety Act? Yes, because the Safety Act was, was concocted at 4 a.m. in the wee hours of the morning without okay. any police involvement whatsoever. Thank you, Senator. We need to come and sit at the table and deal you, with Senator. the real issues we and are, problems. We're, are, we are going to move on. We have a follow-up for the governor. Now, last month, former Riverside Police Chief Tom Weitzel criticized the Safety Act in an op-ed saying it will take officers off the streets. Quote, you could have officers doing paperwork for six to eight hours on a single arrest, which is unacceptable. The law will also create apathy and low morale, end quote. So what is your response to police who say you are making their jobs more difficult? You have 30 seconds here. That's in fact not true. What we're providing is more funding for police, making sure that we have uh, the ability for police to get the tools and technology that they need to solve crimes more quickly. You know, it's one of the reasons that I invested in our crime labs is to make sure that we could eliminate, as we did, the rape kit backlog in our state. We had 2,000 rape kits left over from the last Republican governor, and we've solved that by actually investing. Darren Bailey voted against that. Senator Bailey, do you support any form of eliminating cash bail, or would you prefer to keep the current system that's in place? 30 seconds to you. We need to have a seat with everybody. We need to meet with everyone. Open doors, not behind locked doors, where J.B. Pritzker and his cohorts met for months developing this egregious bill. We need, everyone needs a seat at the table. You just said What JB months, is telling months. you is simply not true. Months People, of hearings. <laughs> this guy, I mean, this is endless. Why are the, did the police not know what they're talking about? These things, these actions that he took, guess what they're going to do? They're going to raise property taxes because he enforced the fact that, that police, he took away their training. Now local governments have to train their own police. He said you have to wear body cams, but he said now you have to pay for these yourself unfunded mandates. That's all this man knows. He's destroying our state Governor, from the inside sir, out. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to respond to that. Thank you. I've provided more money for police. I've provided more money for our municipalities. Two billion dollars more during my term in office for local governments and for police. It's just a lie what Darren Bailey is saying. Um, he's saying we're defunding. He's the one who voted against uh, funding for our state police, adding hundreds of state police to make sure that we can keep our communities safer. Okay, Taman has the next Well, I got my name Taman. mentioned. Can the, I have one more rebuttal? Thank you, Jennifer. We're, we're going to move on for now. Senator, this question will go to you. Under Illinois' last Republican governor, Bruce Rauner, social services and state agencies came to a halt during his two-year budget stalemate with the Democratic-led legislature. Senator, you have also pledged to cut state spending. If elected, how would you do that without shutting down social services? 60 seconds, please. Reprioritization of spending and a zero-based budget. When I started this journey with uh, J.B. Pritzker, Illinois budget was $34 billion, and today it's $46.5 billion. When there's a problem, J.B. just happily throws cash at the problem without any accountability or transparency at all. We have everything that we need within our laws and our, and our agencies. But you know what the problem is? Many times people don't know what's available to them. I hear this all the time. I heard it today, a lady with a child that needs help, and she's just recently discovering what is available to her. J.B. Pritzker has absolutely failed the people of the state of Illinois by informing them. But instead, he likes to toss cash, create new programs, uh, and actually he's doing the same thing with our police. I sponsored a bill that actually gives more money to the police than he offered. He'll throw more money and hire more police, but guess what? They won't have the power to do their jobs. Senator, you mentioned zero-based budgeting, but what happens if the Democratic-led House and Senate say no? There is no... So I will bring to the table and create unity so that we all, right. all sit down and talk about right. the solutions. All right, Senator Governor, I want to bring you into the conversation. In recent weeks, Illinois families have started receiving one-time income and property tax rebates, but families are still feeling the squeeze due to the tax hikes. Vehicle registration fees have increased 50 to $100, and you've raised the gas tax and expanded the online sales tax. Would you consider rolling back any of those taxes due to inflation? 60 seconds, please. 
It's been almost 20 years since Illinois invested in our infrastructure, and as a result of the infrastructure bill that I got passed, we are rebuilding our roads and our bridges and our airports and water ports. In fact, in Darren Bailey's district, we uh, are rebuilding roads that are vital to the people who are farming in his district. Uh, look, I want to be clear. I balanced four budgets in a row. I paid off all the state's overdue bills. Um, I've gotten oh, six credit upgrades no and one I've Senator Senator provided $1.8 billion in gas, grocery, and property tax relief. If we keep balancing the budgets, if we keep doing it, we can make tax cuts permanent. Senator or uh, Governor, you pursued uh, moving Illinois from a flat tax income system to a graduated one. Is that something that you would pursue in a second term? Will you revisit that? No, but I do believe that uh, wealthier people should uh, not reap all the benefits and working people getting the shaft. Uh, I have, in fact, worked to make our tax system fairer. I believe that it's important to note that I uh, closed corporate loopholes, $700 million worth, and made sure that we provided tax relief to working we'll, families. We'll, we'll put 15 seconds on the, the clock. You, you do want the wealthy to pay more, so how do you achieve that, given we have a flat tax system? Again, here? I just pointed that out, right? Closing corporate loopholes for businesses that don't need it allowed us to bring $700 million more into government and to make or sure to provide, tax provide so those tax Senator, hold on one second. Seniors relief, that tax relief for working families. That is what we're trying to do. Senator, uh, we've heard a lot of people complaining about property taxes, but those taxes pay for more than 60% of the state's education funding. So, Senator, how do you balance property tax relief against making sure that states are fully funded? We'll give you 60 seconds. Zero-based budgeting and dealing with the property taxes. Every word that comes out of this man's mouth is deception. He shorted our pensions by $4 billion every year that he's been governor. Our budget's not balanced. This man borrowed money, the only governor in America to borrow money from the Federal Reserve. Our budget's still not balanced. He tossed COVID cash to fund schools and, and townships and, and private, uh, uh, private interests. JB's an arrogant liar. This budget to him is a shell game, and he thinks that we're all patsies because we're buying it. Well, friends, people are waking up to the truth, and that truth is going to get this man fired this year. Governor, your name was invoked, if you'd like to take 30 seconds to respond. Well, over and over again, you've heard Darren Bailey lie just for the last 10 minutes of this debate. And I have to say that he's following in the footsteps of the person he begged for an endorsement from, and that's Donald Trump. The truth is that we need a governor who actually stands up for the truth. Let me tell you the truth. I consolidated police and fire Four pensions years. across the state. We're worse and off. That is allowing uh, property taxes to go down by billions of dollars. Darren Bailey oh. voted to raise property oh, oh, taxes oh. by 81 percent. Got it. Governor, uh, back to the same question. How do you balance property tax relief against making sure that schools are funded? Well, again, if you balance the state budget, this is hugely important. If you balance the state budget, as You've I have had for four, four years, years your property in a row, taxes should be going it allows down. us Senator to Lemka. increase funding by the state for our education system, and I've done that by $1.3 billion. Doing that allows local property taxes to go down. It also funds our schools. Remember that local governments, local schools, are paying for the bulk of the education that they're providing. In other words, local property taxes. Our state government should be paying for about half of what education costs in this state. Instead, in Illinois, for years and years, the Republicans and some Democrats were, frankly, ruining the budget. And uh, as a result, we've had to provide more and more tax relief at the state level, again, balancing the budget. Having a surplus, as I have achieved over the last two years, allows us to reduce the burden on local property taxpayers. Thank you. Senator Bailey, you've said on Facebook Live that you would roll back everything that Governor Pritzker has done in his first term. Does that include measures like the $15 minimum wage here in Illinois? 30 seconds, please. Oh, I think, what I, I think it was very obvious what I meant. Most of this law is going to entail dealing with the General Assembly. Uh, the $15 an hour wage. Uh, no, I think I was talking about a lot of his tax hikes, uh, the, the, um, the Safety Act. Uh, that's what we're dealing with right now. That's what's destroying our state. People have made their adjustments to the $15 an hour wage. I didn't agree with it. I voted no against it. But we've got a lot of work to do. This guy's had four years.
We should be better off today, and we're not. So, Senator, you would leave that $15 minimum wage in place? Yes, it's not on my agenda. I'd like to respond. And, and get, but to please, that, go ahead, Governor. Governor. Yes, so we'll give you some let's time. Let's just point out, Darren Bailey, once again, is lying. He has said he wants to eliminate the state minimum wage. He says that he can't get it done, but if you put a governor in, and if he succeeds at it, people's wages will go down. I've worked hard to raise wages in the state to make sure that we have uh, not only the ability small to business. creating jobs and raising wages. That's the job of a governor. And apparently, Darren Bailey doesn't understand that. Let's see if we can uh, put a button uh, up this issue. Uh, governor, in light of the pain inflation has caused, do you commit to not raise taxes if reelected? 30 seconds. Again, we've balanced the budget every year, and we've had surpluses, and so we've got to continue to do that. That is how you lower taxes in this state. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Can I have a chance at that one? Uh, no. Jennifer's got another question for right. us. <laughs> we got to keep it My moving. name is being mentioned by no, everything no, no. You're, you're the man says. I promise. All right. We're going to move on, gentlemen. <laughs> we're going to move on to the topic of abortion now. You have both had a lot to say since the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. Governor Pritzker, you have made abortion rights a centerpiece of your campaign. In Illinois, there are no restrictions on abortion before fetal viability. Most experts say that's reached around 24 to 26 weeks. After fetal viability, abortions may be performed to protect the patient's life or health. Governor, would you push to allow abortion for any reason throughout pregnancy? You no, I think the seconds. law that we have in place now, which I signed into place, that protects a woman's right to choose is what we should keep in place. Darren Bailey wants to eliminate a woman's right to choose. He wants to to take away women's reproductive you rights. You are so divisive that, on that everything That is precisely you say. what he stands for. Divisive. Go look it up. And let me just Dividing tell you, is, I have spent my life fighting for women's rights and for women's reproductive rights, and as long as I'm governor, we're going to protect them. Okay, Senator Bailey, we're going to give you a chance to respond now. You said in one of your Facebook videos, quote, I think we're going to end this abortion thing, end quote. Aside from saving the life of the mother, would you ban all abortions, including in cases of rape and incest? You have 60 seconds. Illinois has the most permissive abortion laws in the nation. Nothing's going to change when I'm governor. I couldn't change them if I could. J.B. Pritzker stays up at night trying to dream up new abortion laws. Those issues are dividing us. My focus is going to be crime, taxes, and education. I've been saying that for a long time as well, and you didn't pick up on that. Those are the issues that unite us. Those are the issues that are causing our state to fail. But J.B. Pritzker wants to fear monger and put all of this nonsense out there that can't be changed anyway and it needs to stop. We need to focus on uniting this state. Thank you, Senator Bailey. Our next question comes from one of our viewers. Joining us now for that is Shelby Roberts. She's the main anchor at WMBD here in central Illinois, and she is with us tonight on stage at the Braden Auditorium. Shelby. Jennifer, thank you. Governor Pritzker, Senator Bailey, thank you both so much for joining us. We do have a handful of viewer questions we'd like to get to tonight. The first coming from Nick Mazzarelli in LaSalle County. Here it is. The cost of college tuition has been steadily increasing, which has made it extremely difficult for students to afford attending public institutions of higher education, especially students who come from first generation or low income families. Do you believe it is important for Illinois to invest more in higher education? And if so, what specific steps would you take as governor to lower the cost of higher education? So a very timely question with us, particularly being on a college campus. Senator Bailey, we'll start with you again. That question is, what specific steps would you take as governor to lower the cost of higher education? You have 60 seconds. Yeah, and I feel for the young man asking the question because many of our children are being pushed out of state because of the high cost of education. Administrative bloat is what's causing this. Unfunded mandates from, from the governor's office are what's causing this. Are you guys aware that the president of, of University of Illinois, President Killian, makes almost a million dollars a year? Can you tell me in what world that makes sense? Our children are leaving the state. They're not able to attend here. Our tuition is entirely too high. And guess what? Newsflash, under the last four years of J.B. Pritzker, it's gotten worse. He's, had, he's got the supermajority. If we want to tackle and deal with these issues, 
We should be the ones, we have the wonderful colleges in this state where everyone in the nation should be wanting to flock here. And I want to give ISU a shout out because when I sit on the appropriations committees and look at these budgets, Illinois State University is consistently on top of their action and they're doing an amazing job, so thank you. Governor Pritzker, your turn. What specific steps would you take to lower the cost of higher education? You'll also get 60 seconds. When I came into office, young people were leaving this state because it was cheaper to go to the University of Alabama or University of Iowa than it was to stay here in the state of Illinois. And so I went after that. I raised the investments that we're making in higher education. In fact, I've increased MAP grants, those are our state scholarships, by 50%. That's $200 million. Uh, and that means that anyone that's eligible that applies for a MAP grant now gets one. That's never happened in the history of our state. And now, as a result, we have the highest freshman enrollment across the state in six years. And here at ISU, it's the highest in 35 years. Let's continue with the topic of education. Under Chicago City College's STAR program, students who complete high school with a B average get free tuition and books. Senator Bailey, would you consider a free community college program statewide? 30 seconds, please. Well, community college is a, a, an amazingly uh, responsible program. I'm very proud of our community colleges. So I think that, uh, I mean, everything in this state needs revamped per your question earlier. We have got to sit down at the table and see what we can do, what we can afford to do with these students and to ensure that they go to college, that they become productive. It really needs to start before that in our public schools. Governor Pritzker, same question. Would you consider free community college statewide? 30 seconds. Well, Darren Bailey apparently wants to sit down at a table to figure it out, doesn't actually have any ideas. I've been going at making sure that we're increasing funding for scholarships for kids to go to community college, to make sure that they can get certificates and associate's degrees. Um, and again, Darren Bailey voted so against all of that. So why aren't they going to free? If, if, and as a result of that? the work that we've done, we have more kids who are choosing to stay in Illinois, and adults too, no, who want to get a better no, uh, skill right. and a better wage. Gentlemen, if you talk over each other, we, sort of, we can't here, so try not to do that. Last winter, the Illinois State Board of Education released a report card detailing significant drops in enrollment, academic performance, and potential declines in graduation rates due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Senator Bailey, what steps should the state take to make up for lost learning that students have experienced during the pandemic? 30 seconds. Please. Oh gosh, well, we should never seconds. have shut down. Our, our, our education system is a national embarrassment. Our children can't read and do math at grade level. The overwhelming majority of children in Chicago public school systems can't read and do math at grade level. The Wall Street Journal just gave us an F. I'll fire the entire State Board of Education and Dr. Carmen Ayala. I'll make sure that we have local control and I'll make sure the parents' voices are heard. I'll fully fund schools on time every year and that will include Tra uh, instruction on trades and vocational skills. I will get rid of CRT. I'll get rid of the egregious gender curriculum that J.B. Pritzker has put in our schools. And unlike Governor Pritzker, I'll keep the schools open and I'll make sure that parents right. have choice for competition. Senator, Governor, uh, same question to you. What should the state do to make up for lost learning experience during the pandemic? And also, the Senator mentioned critical race theory, gender studies, stuff like that. So if you'd like to address that as well. Look, okay. so many untruths that have been said, I don't, can't course, even address of all course. of them. Let's start with this. He, he, uh, he talks about what was in the Wall Street Journal. That was provided to them by a right-wing carnival barker organization here in the state of Illinois. Of course, of course. It's just wrong, they are wrong. And yeah, the fact is that wrong. US News and World Report uh, gave Illinois the ranking of number one among all the most populous states in the country for pre-K to 12 education. And I'm proud of the investments that we've made to accomplish that. All right, audience, please hold your applause. Audience, help us out, please hold your applause. Jennifer has the next question. All right, thank you, Taman. Gentlemen, the tragic July 4th shooting in the city of Highland Park left seven people dead and 48 more hurt. Since then, activists have been calling for action on gun control. In fact, our poll found 54% of people support a statewide ban on assault-style weapons. So far, the legislature has failed to act. Governor Pritzker, I want to play you part of what you said in the hours after the shooting. I'm furious that this is happening in communities all across Illinois and America. 
I'm furious because it does not have to be this way. Governor, you have called for a national ban. Why haven't you been able to get this done at the state level? You have 60 seconds. Well, there are working groups that are working through this in the General Assembly. Remember, the General Assembly is a co-equal branch of government. They've got to do their work in order for us to actually have legislation. But I believe we ought to ban assault weapons and high-capacity magazines in the state of Illinois. And we should get it done nationally. because. That Highland Park shooting, the mass shooter had three 30-round cartridges and shot 83 bullets in less than 60 seconds. No one should have that kind of firepower. There's no sporting use for that, no defense use for that. The fact is that we've got to do more to get guns out of the hands of the people who shouldn't have them. And Darren Bailey wants to get rid of background checks in the state of Let's Illinois. Let's try securing That's the borders. Just you want to uh, get, get the rid of the stop void it. card and get rid of background checks. I expanded background checks, so we now have universal background checks for everyone that purchases a gun. But, Governor, the Democrats control the state legislature. Again, why haven't you been able to get this done if you want it so badly? Well, I, I'm sure you understand that uh, at this point in the legislature, you need a supermajority in order to get that done. So the working groups that are happening in the General Assembly are determining what they can get done in the veto session, which is happening in November, and what they can get done done after the first of the year when there's a new session right. and you need Governor, a simple majority. Thank you. But we are going to ban thank you. assault thank weapons Thank you, Governor. Senator state. Bailey, you have voted against gun control measures in the past, but as we stated, our poll found a majority of people in Illinois want a statewide ban on assault-style weapons. Would you go against the majority's wishes as governor? Why or why not? 60 seconds for this question. Well, again, it's the General Assembly that determines that. My heart absolutely breaks for everyone that's afflicted by these deaths that are literally happening every day and every week in Chicago in the minority neighborhoods where Governor Pritzker doesn't really care to show up. Illinois has the most restrictive gun laws right now, friends. Take a look at it. We've got everything that we need. The Highland Park shooting, it shouldn't have happened because of the laws that are on the books. But when Governor Pritzker doesn't follow or obey those laws, these things happen. We need a governor who's going to stand up, just like I talked about mental health. We've got, we've got these things, mechanisms available, but people don't know because we continue to pass new laws continually all the time. And, and as per Governor Pritzker's issue about involving the General Assembly, I find it very interesting. He hasn't really cared too much about that two years ago since he continues to, to expand his executive orders every month. It's nonsense. Senator, thank you. Taman has now some follow-up questions on the topic of gun control. Thank Taman. you, Jennifer. Governor, during your first term, you signed a bill that includes the option for FOID card applicants to submit fingerprints to expedite the process, but many still opt out, leaving the state without complete data and law-abiding gun owners in limbo due to a backed-up system. How do you balance the need to keep people safe without inconveniencing lawful gun owners? 30 seconds, please. Well, I don't think it's too much of a, an inconvenience for a lawful gun owner or somebody who's purchasing a gun to go through a universal background check. That is what the FOID card really is all about. And uh, if we don't do that, we're going to end up with more illegal guns on the street and more felons who are able to the attain cards those grab. assault weapons and high-capacity magazines and other guns who are going to, uh, frankly, run rampant. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I think it's funny that... that uh, Darren Bailey uh, doesn't want to fund police, but thinks that everybody ought to have a gun. Hey, Senator, same question for you. How do you balance the need now, to keep can, people can safe? I, can I address yes, that? Yes, you can. Yes, certainly. I don't want to fund police. Go ahead, 30 I seconds. I actually sir. sponsored a bill that, that added more, that had more money than it was in Governor Pritzker's budget. That budget that he keeps talking about that that, that was in, involved in, well, it was an it was a over-the-top spending budget. $46.5 billion, friends, you're going to have to make up that difference in the future or we're going to have some ra massive problems. Okay, Senator, same question for you. How do you balance the need to keep people safe without inconveniencing lawful gun owners? 30 seconds. We repeal the Safety Act and we allow law enforcement to do their jobs. We make sure that people understand the laws that are on the books and that they are actually enforced. That's what we do. This, the FOID card does nothing. You already have a federal background firearm check. Every state around us, they don't have a FOID. 
But we do, and the fees keep going up, and the state, he, Governor Pritzker swept the funds here not too long ago. It's nonsense. All right, thank you, Senator Governor. Next question for you. After Highland Park, state police issued an emergency rule. It strengthens their ability to consider clear and present danger reports when considering FOID applications. But the gunman in Highland Park was still able to obtain a firearm because his parents signed release forms on his behalf. Would you consider eliminating the parental cons consent loophole for 18-year-olds and raising the overall age to 21? 30 seconds. We obviously need to close that loophole and make it impossible for someone to get an assault weapon and high-capacity magazines. We've seen seven people died because one person went on top of a roof with his assault weapon and high-capacity magazines, and 36 people were shot. No one should have that kind of firepower, and yeah, we should make sure that he couldn't get it. Senator Bailey, your school, Full Armor Christian Academy, has a sign on its doors warning people that staff are heavily armed and any attempt to harm children will be met with deadly force. Senator, do you want to arm all Illinois teachers? 30 seconds, please. Well, first and foremost, my school's, that school's not political, and I'm not dragging it into this campaign. Secondly, that would be up to the General Assembly of whether or not they would want to uh, support such a measure and, and bring, it to the, uh, bring it to the attention. And I want to make sure that you understand something, everyone out there. I'm, I want to make a commitment to the people right now while we have time because that uh, I want to commit to you that when I get elected as governor that I'm going to serve all four years of my term, that I promise you I will not be running for another elected office. I've signed the People's Pledge promising that I'll do that. And Governor Pritzker, I want to ask you if you're interested in signing that same pledge to commit right, that Senator, you won't run for another office while you are a Senator, governor. And a matter of fact, I have the pledge right here if you're interested in signing that. All right, audience, we need you to remain quiet. We need you to my so, response, Senator. Are you Senator, going to run for president, Senator? So we, Jennifer and I will ask the questions here, but it is it is a relevant topic. We're going to do a quick pivot. We're going to move back because we're in control here. But, Governor, it is worth asking. You've raised your national profile quite a bit, raising funds for Democrats in other states. And by traveling to New Hampshire, these moves have stoked speculation you might run for president in 2024. It is fair to ask, will you commit to serving a full term if reelected? 30 seconds, sir. I intend to serve four years more as governor and get reelected. Uh, and I intend to support the president. He's running for reelection. Okay, all right, thank you very much, that's clear. So serving all four years supporting President Biden. Thank you. Shelby has our next question. Come on, thank you so much, candidates. We have another viewer question, and this one comes from Robert Heaps in Peoria. Here's what Robert wants to know. What specifically do you plan to do to ensure the Illinois state pension system remains sustainable? And Senator Bailey, you'll go first for this viewer question. Again, specifically, what is your plan in order to make Illinois state pensions sustainable? You have 60 seconds. Well, I can say that if I would have been governor for the last four years, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And every state employee, whether they're earning their pension or whether they're living off of it, would feel comfortable and they wouldn't have to worry about that each and every day. Because as this gentleman suggested, there is not one state worker who has earned or who is earning their pension that believes or, or feels confident that that pension is going to be with them for the future. Political elites and union bosses have hacked the system for far too long. So I'm doing what I've been doing, raising the alarm. I call the problem what it is, and I've been sitting down with, with pensioners across the state, sitting at the table, trying to find out what we can do, putting new hires on 401k plans, what we can do. Once we, once we do a zero-based budget, I believe there's 10 to $15 billion in that budget of waste, and we can take that and begin to get our state healthy again. So I assure you that I will not be infringing upon your earned benefits, but unfortunately, Thank you. Thank you're you. still as concerned about that as you were four years ago. Thank Thank you so much, Senator Bailey. All right, your turn, Governor Pritzker. What specifically do you plan to do in order to make state pensions sustainable? You have 60 seconds. Well, during my term in office, um, I have uh, from the very beginning said that a pension is a promise and it must be lived up to by state government. Now, I've also reduced the net pension liability while I've been in office, not only because we make good investments, but also because we put more money into the pension systems than ever before. Now, that's been because we had 
surpluses because we balanced the budget. And I want to make clear that uh, I also expanded a program that was introduced by a Republican state representative uh, that allows retirees to, bought, to get bought out of their pension. They can get all their money up front, and it saves taxpayers money when they do that. So I'm pleased to say that we've made real progress on our statewide pensions, and I want to point out that I got passed a police and fire pension consolidation bill that reduces property taxes by billions of dollars. Thank and you, everyone's Gov still worried about their pensions. Thank you, Governor. Taman has the next question. Thank you, Jennifer. Gentlemen, I have personalized questions for each of you. There will be no opportunity for a rebuttal. Please help us out with that. Governor, I'm going to start with you. Since the beginning of 2019, 2,589 people have been murdered in the city of Chicago, according to Chicago police. Senator Bailey has flat out blamed you for crime in Chicago. Do you bear any responsibility for it? 60 seconds. Look, when you're governor of the state, you're governor of the whole state, and you're responsible for helping municipalities to fight crime, and that's what I've been doing. Again, we've funded state police to assist local governments. We've spent uh, money for our local police. We've sent them money to do their jobs. We've built out crime labs that allow local police to get DNA evidence uh, examined. And we've reduced, in fact, eliminated the rape kit backlog. Uh, these are all ways in which we've reduced crime across the state. Remember, Darren Bailey. I think he said all this before. Darren Bailey. Darren Bailey voted against all of those things. He does not believe, he is a hypocrite on this subject. All right, no, no, no rebuttals. I know you probably want to get in there, Senator, but this next question is for you. Let me play for you a statement you made that's concerned some Illinois voters. You know, the, the uh, attempted extermination of the Jews of World War II, it doesn't even compare on a shadow of, of the life that has been lost and, and with abortion since its legalization. You've also said, Senator, that Jewish leaders have told you that you were right. Could you name the Jewish leaders who agree with you? 60 seconds, please. The atrocity. Audience, please. Audience. The Audience. atrocity of the Holocaust is beyond parallel. Those statements were made five years ago when Governor Rauner signed into law taxpayer-funded abortion. So, yes, the facts are true when you compare the numbers. I don't, uh, t skewing that out of control like the liberal press has done is, is abs actually a shame. All right, uh, but Senator, just the, can, name the Jewish leaders who agree with you. No, <laughs> I'm not going to put anybody on record. Not going to put anybody on record. All right, another one for you, Senator. As we mentioned at the open of tonight's debate, AARP is our partner. Yesterday, the Pritzker campaign unearthed a Facebook Live video recorded last month. In it, you called the AARP selfish and immoral and leading to the destruction of society as we know it. Were you specifically referring to the state's 1.7 million AARP members, or were you talking about the group's leadership? 60 seconds, please. No, I was specifically referring to the fact that AARP put $500,000 of, of seniors' hard-earned money in support of the progressive tax. And J.B. Pritzker's progressive tax, which if he's elected again, it will come back in force, and it is going to be a tax on your retirement. Make, make no bones about that. Don't think that he's trying to tax the rich. This is what J.B. does very well. And, and, and then he changes it all, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Let's take property taxes. That may be one of J.B. Pritzker's biggest failures of all. Remember when he was campaigning four years ago and he said he was going to assign a commission to explore solutions for property taxes? He did that, and guess what? They came up with zero recommendations, none. He's not interested in doing anything regarding property taxes. And as a matter of fact, Amendment 1, it's going to raise your property taxes. Senator, just one more time before we move on, I'll give you 15 seconds. When you said the AARP was selfish and immoral, who were you referring to specifically? I was referring, as I said from the very beginning, the organization in its purpose of giving a half of a million dollars to promote the progressive tax a couple years ago, do you remember that in the last election? That is a tax on seniors' right. retirements. All right, thank you, sir. Jennifer has the next question. As Senator Bailey, we're going to stick with you with this question. You sued Governor Pritzker over his use of emergency powers during the COVID pandemic. But how would you use your emergency powers if there was another pandemic? You have 60 seconds. Absolutely. 
the last thing we need to do is be is, is shut government down. Shut, shut, well, we shut government down, we shut businesses down. School children lost two years of education that they'll never recover. Business left the state. The Magnificent Mile has a 29% vacancy rate. Friends, we can never do this again. It's government's role to protect the people. It's government's role to educate and inform. It's government's role to make all this available, but to allow the people to educate them in a way that they can live and function the way that they need to. One size fits all. I begged Governor Pritzker earlier, and, and especially as we were dealing and came back into session, that what's good for some of the larger parts of the state aren't good for our part of the state. Let local government decide what they think is best for their communities. Senator, thank you. Governor Pritzker, audience, please, we got to move on. Governor Pritzker, you have issued 34 COVID disaster declarations, one each month since March 2020. The state is no longer under any major restrictions. So why is the state still operating under these declarations? You have 60 seconds here. Well, I want to make it clear that when Illinois families are threatened, whether it's from a flood or by a deadly global pandemic, it's the job of a governor to save lives and livelihoods. And you can't have your livelihood if you don't have your life. And that's why I followed the science. And by the way, we succeeded. We have the highest, one of the highest vaccination rates in the Midwest, one of the lowest mortality rates in the Midwest. No, 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 that's not true. And, and this was all fighting through when Donald Trump and Darren Bailey were promoting conspiracy theories and telling people not to follow any of the mitigations. He didn't want people to get vaccinated, didn't want them to wear masks. And he himself is not vaccinated. And frankly, and how if do you he know had that? been in charge, how tens you know of thousands that? of people would have died more than did. But Governor, why are we still operating under these declarations? Yeah. The president says the pandemic is over. We're following the federal disaster declaration. That is what the federal Our government president has ended in place. That. And it allows us to, to bring in Medicaid funds and other to support people who have COVID-19 and to support our hospitals. All right, Governor, thank you. Come on. Thank you, Jennifer. Governor, your climate bill sets a goal of Illinois using 50% renewable energy by 2040. But even the regional grid manager says it can't get that done without raising utility bills. Question, should the state tweak its clean energy plan to prevent any future rate, rate hikes? And we'll give you 60 seconds. So CEJA, the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, is designed and is in fact increasing the amount of electricity being produced in our state, solar and wind. We have 7,000 solar applications that have been filed as a result of CEJA, and I've cut the ribbons on quite a number of solar installations which are increasing the amount of energy that's provided. Look, we live in a moment when there is high inflation, when we have a war going on between Ukraine and Russia. That has had an impact on electricity electricity prices. But the oh, fact is no. that here in Illinois, we are a net exporter, I mean, I'm coming we next, are a net ahead, exporter of electricity in the state of Illinois. We continue to be, and we will continue to be because we're creating even more. We'll be the That's best state true. in the nation for clean energy. Well, Senator, I, I thought this was an area where the two of you agree because at a forum in August, you said you were all in for green energy, uh, but you disagree with the current timeline. So if elected, what changes would you make to the state's clean energy plan. Well, again, I'd repeal that bill and we'd come back to the table. JB's Climate Act is much more radical than the Paris Climate Agreement. It sets hard deadlines, much more dangerous than any, more, more so than anywhere in the world. We're not a net exporter, we're importing energy. J.B. Pritzker allowed for eminent domain in this bill. Friends, that's dangerous. We have no purpose for that in the state of Illinois. How many of you out there have experienced higher energy costs? A doubling, maybe? That doesn't have anything to do with the war in Ukraine. That has to do with J.B. Pritzker's Climate Act, period, and it must be changed. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Back to Shelby now. All right, Taman, thank you so much, Governor Pritzker, Senator Bailey. This will be our final viewer question of the evening, and this one was sent to us by Brandon Monroe from Peoria, and Brandon did a little bit of homework for this one. According to a recent poll done by Chief Executive Magazine, where they asked nearly 700 CEOs and business owners to rank the states from best to worst to do business in, Illinois placed 48th just ahead of New York and California. With businesses like Caterpillar, Citadel, and Boeing leaving the state, 
What is your plan to make Illinois a more competitive place to do business in? And Senator Bailey, this question will go to you first. Again, that question is, what is your plan to make Illinois a more competitive choice for doing business in? You have 60 seconds. It's interesting because I'm hearing a very resounding message tonight from our questions. Governor Pritzker's had four years of a super majority. We shouldn't be having this conversation. Just yesterday, we heard that Tyson Foods are exiting the state. Last week, or a couple weeks ago, the CEO of McDonald's said Chicago is a city in crisis. Our state leaders, Governor Pritzker and, and Mayor Lightfoot, are, are, are ignoring the situation. A zero-based budget, friends, will solve the problem. We'll put all new agency directors in place. We will we'll pri reprioritize our spending. We'll start from the ground up. You will see where every penny is spent in, this, in the, every state agency. That's how we lower our taxes. Our, our, Unemployment fund, J.B. Pritzker failed to pay that off. Work comp is two and a half times higher than any state around us. We need to cut regulations and we need to give business a reason to come back to the state. Senator, but they're not going Senator to because Bailey. it's not safe. Our taxes are too high Thank and our you. education is Thank a disaster. You. We're going to give the governor a chance to answer this. You heard Brandon mention companies like Caterpillar, Boeing, Citadel, Tyson moving jobs. So what is your plan to make Illinois a competitive choice for doing business in? You also have 60 seconds. Well, Rivian, Amazon, Kellogg's, Boeing have added tens of thousands of jobs in the state of Illinois and brought headquarters here. And in fact, during my tenure in office, we've created more small business than ever before. Small businesses are thriving. We cut taxes on 400,000 of them. I incentivized the data center industry and that's brought in $13 billion of investment investment to the state and thousands and thousands of jobs. Look, Darren Bailey voted against raising the minimum wage. He voted against incentives for business. He's bad for business. He's bad for working Look families. And he has no idea how to grow the economy. Thank you, Governor. Taman has the next question now. Thank you, Jennifer. On the ballot this November, the Workers' Rights Amendment. It would guarantee Illinois workers the right to collectively bargain for wages, hours, safety, and working conditions. Governor, you've signaled your support for this, but federal law already governs collective bargaining in the private sector, so why is a constitutional amendment needed? 60 seconds, please. Well, workers should have a right to organize. Look, corporations are much more powerful than an individual worker who wants to go in and bargain for their own wages. So workers ought to be able to get together and go in together to try to get a better wage, a safer workplace, benefits. That's what we're trying to guarantee. I believe it's the right thing to do to have a workers' rights amendment. And yes, I have fought for this for my entire career. Senator Bailey, audience. Audience, hold your applause. Senator Bailey, your biggest campaign contributor has written a $1 million check to the effort to defeat the workers' right amendment. What is your position on guaranteeing workers the right to collectively bargain? 60 seconds. <laughs> they already, union members already have that right. My message is this. Union, stay in your lane and everything will be fine. Leave mom and pop and private business alone. Why on earth would we Audience, want to force please. this? Audience, we can't hear the candidates. Go Here's ahead, the Senator. reality. Under J.B. Pritzker right now today, Illinois has 45,000 fewer people working. Illinois today than when J.B. Pritzker took office has 125,000 less people in the state. Why are they leaving? These ideas aren't working. Just not Leave true. private business alone. And as a matter of fact, Amendment 1, it is going to increase your property taxes. You're making that Leave up. it alone. All right. Thank you very much, Senator Governor. Next question for you. The U.S. Bureau of Labor recorded 752,000 union members in Illinois in 2021. That's nearly 14 percent of all workers with more unionization efforts popping up here weekly. Governor, when you came into office in 2019, you signed a four-year contract with the state's largest union asked me your office estimated the overall cost of the state at 500 million dollars if re-elected how will you negotiate the next contract to ensure taxpayers are not saddled with additional costs 30 seconds actually we reduced the cost to the state of Illinois in that contract and still provided significant health care coverage for all of our state workers we need to continue to be prudent about the negotiations with AFSCME, with unionized workers for the state of Illinois it is the 
the responsibility of the governor to go in and bargain, and we did that, and we got a good deal. Remember, for four years before I became governor, the prior governor refused to even sit down with our workers in the state. We need to do that, make sure that they get a fair wage and the state gets right. a good deal. Thank you, Governor. Senator Bailey, I think you said unions need to stay in their lane, but you heard the statistics. Nearly 14% of all Illinois workers are union members, so how would you handle working with unions if elected? 30 seconds. Well, I look forward to it, and I thank transparency and accountability to the people, to the rest of Illinois is going to change and make a new day for us. The states around us, they're flourishing. Their economies are amazing. And look at our economy here in Illinois. I think that speaks volumes. And I think that's what we're hearing all night. Things aren't right and things aren't healthy in Illinois. And as far as our public sector unions, there's not a person here sitting here right now that is confident in your pensions. This gentleman's failed you. All right, thank you, Senator. Jennifer is our next question. Taman, thank you, gentlemen. Last month, federal prosecutors brought bribery charges against State Senator Emil Jones III. He's one of nine state lawmakers accused of corruption since 2019. We would like each of you to tell us three things you would specifically do over the next four years to stop corruption. Senator Bailey, you're going to go first with this one. You have 60 seconds. Well, I think one of the biggest primary things that we can begin to do is, is, is when these uh, elected officials are charged, that we strip their benefits from them. You want to talk about the pension system, the Illinois legislative pension, guess what? It's pretty healthy funded, okay, whereas the other ones aren't. So we strip them of their benefits. We start electing honorable men and women, and we get rid of this problem. This, this corruption and evil that exists in our state. Many times it happens because of the closed door deals that are taking place in our state house when there is no transparency and accountability, lawlessness and corruption like this, this runs rampant. But yet in a Democrat supermajority and under Governor Pritzker, has anything been done? Nope. Okay, you name one thing, two other. I think that's, that would solve it. That would solve it. Okay, Governor, your turn now. Three things you would specifically do over the next four years to stop corruption. You have 60 seconds. Well, let's start with what we have done over the last four years. We passed three ethics bills in the state of Illinois. Is it enough? No, because there are public servants who are not living up to their obligation of integrity the in public service. A joke. And that means that every year we've got to fight for ethics reform. We need to improve our laws every year to prevent people from uh, committing these ethics violations. And frankly, as you've seen, uh, Emil Jones has been held accountable by the laws on the books. And I think we ought to keep going and make sure that everybody that serves in public office is living up to their obligations to the voters. Okay, Governor, thank you. Come on. Thank you, Jennifer. Governor Pritzker, more than 2,000 asylum seekers have been bused uh, from Texas to Illinois in recent weeks. They are being provided with social services and temporary housing. You've signed several measures to give migrants more protections here. How many more asylum seekers can the state welcome without it becoming a strain on government resources? 30 seconds, please. We need comprehensive uh, immigration reform in this country. That's the first thing that ought to happen. But when the governor of Texas, the governor of Florida are inhumanely sending people who are here legally, who are refugees to this country seeking asylum, when they send them to states all across the country, not just to Illinois, um, we have an obligation to act in a way that uh, we should be proud of, that we're going to make sure they get shelter, that they get food, that they get health care, and that we allow them to right, get Governor. the asylum all that right. they're right. seeking. Go Governor, thank you very much. Senator, your turn now. How would you respond to the arrival of migrants? 30 seconds, please. Well, Illinois is doing what Illinois does best, continually helping people in need. But the reality is no state or city can fund this or afford this. Illinois is a sanctuary state. Are you aware that we spend over $5 billion each year taking care of this situation? So I've asked Governor Pritzker to get a hold of his pal That's Joe Biden and secure the border. True. If he won't do that, send us the funds that we need, the resources that we need. And if he won't do that, put them up in one of your Hyatts on your All own right. dime. All right, we're
Uh, answering it. All right, we're running low on time. Jennifer has our next question. Yeah, Audience, have, host, sit tight. Covered, you're going to like this one. You're going to like this. We it's have good. covered a lot of tough topics. We're going to end with a lighter question. And for that, we go out to the baseball field at Illinois State University. Hi, I'm Blake Stinger, outfielder for the Redbirds baseball team. We get to choose a walk-up song when you go up to bat. So, candidates, what would your song be? All right, so there you have it. If you are a baseball player, what would your walk-up song be? Governor Pritzker, you can go first, 15 seconds. Well, any song that highlights the big things that need to get done for our state is what I would uh, would suggest should be the walk-up song. We've gotten so many done over okay. the last four years. All right. I hope he that couldn't we'll continue come up with to a do over the next four. Senator Braley, same question. What would your walk-up song be? I'm a hard-working man because these young people... I'm going to preserve a future for these young right. people, and I am going to we, represent every hardworking person out there. We have here. to give you time for closing statements. You each have 30 seconds. Senator Bailey, you go first. Your time starts now. Is this the close? Closing, yes. All right. Friends, we're being crushed by property taxes, crime. We're being crushed by uh, failed education. And it's all because J.B. Pritzker is hell-bent on becoming the most radical leftist governor in America. I know I may seem a little different than some of you. I, I got a downstate twang, and, and sometimes I, I get a little too passionate about what's going on in this state. But this man is dangerous. Thank you, Senator I have been Bailey. <laughs> Gov I'm, that's your 30 seconds. Governor Pritzker, your closing statement again, 30 seconds. Well, I'm proud of what we've achieved over the last four years. We balanced the budget. We paid off all our state's overdue bills. We got six credit upgrades and provided $1.8 billion in gas, grocery, and property tax relief. We raised the minimum wage, protected a woman's right to choose, legalized cannabis, and got the biggest infrastructure bill passed in the history of the state of Illinois. more big things done for the people of our state. All right, that'll do it for us. Governor Pritzker, Senator Bailey, thank you both so much for sharing your visions of Illinois with us tonight. We really appreciate it. The second and final debate is October 18th in Chicago. Central Illinois.